the Qur'an al Quran we have a second one. It's too loud, right? But I can talk like this, inshaAllah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbish rahli sadri wa yisilli amri wa ahlul uqadatan min nisani afqahu qawli Today we're covering and continuing the series of Lamiyat ibn al-Wardi And we're covering three abiyat today Beautiful advices that ibn al-Wardi gave to his son and also to us Today I'll read them first بَيْنَ تَبْفِيرٍ وَبُخْلٍ مُرُتْبَةٌ وَكِلَا هَذَيْنِ إِنْ دَامَ قَتَلٌ لَا تَخُضْ فِي سَبِّ سَادَاتٍ مَغَوْ إِنَّهُمْ لَيْسُوا بِأَهْلٍ لِلزَّلَلِ وَتَغَافَلْ عَنْ عُمُونٍ إِنَّهُمْ لَمْ يَفُزْ بِالْحَمْدِ إِلَّا مَنْ غَفَلْ Three very beautiful advices that Ibn al-Wardi leaves to his son and to us. And the first line he says, بَيْنَ تَبْذِيرٍ وَبُخْلٍ رُتْبَةٌ Between being extravagant and being wasteful, تَبْذِيرٍ إِنَّ الْمُبَذِّرِينَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ And between being بَخِيرٍ Someone who doesn't give at all, رُتْبَةٌ And that is where the Muslim should be, between being wasteful and between being stingy. The Muslim is in between. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَى عُنُقِكَ وَلَا تَبْسُطْهَا كُلَّ الْبَسْطِ فَتَقْعُدَ مَنُمَّ مَحْسُورًا وَكِلَ هَذَيْنِ إِنْ دَامَ قَتَلْ أو إن, إِنْ زَادَ قَتَلْ So a Muslim, in the way he deals with his finances, and this is an important topic, there, we usually don't talk about finance in Muslim communities, but between being stingy and keeping and hoarding wealth, and between being wasteful, there is a middle path, and that is where the Muslim should be. And nowadays, I don't think it's important to talk about giving too much. I think we need to talk about being stingy too much. Because from my experience, overseas, people have very little, but they give, 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 give. You know? Overseas, my, my experience, even a faqeed, he's more generous than a lani sometimes in America. It's true. It's just, it's just how it is. And especially with the culture now, you know, we, we hoard, hoard, hoard. We like to make sure that accounts are getting filled, filled, filled. Who are they getting filled for? Are you going to use them in your lifetime? And your children, you know how many cases that come to imams and shiul of children of parents that passed away fighting over inheritance. You wanted to benefit your kids. What would have been better is that you taught them how to love each other. And you, thought you taught them how to be generous to each other. And you taught them to have that sort of, you know, himaya for each other. But the father, he focuses on gathering wealth, gathering wealth, gathering wealth. And by the end of his life, he thinks he's done such a good favor to his children. But rather, he's done something even worse. He separated them now because of his wealth. Because of that inheritance that he's passing down to them. And this is so, so common. It's in Pakistani cultures, it's in Palestinian families, it's in all of our families. We've seen it. We've experienced it. We've seen how families get separated over inheritance. So we should not be people that hoard, 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 hoard in hopes for a brighter future for our kids. No, rather we should spend on good paths. We should be people that the amount we earn, we spend less than we earn. Number one, the number one rule is that you should spend less than you earn. The amount you, the amount you should have in your expenses, whether it be your car payment, your house payment, the payment for your children should be less than you earn. And then you should give some for sadaqah. Aside from that, zakah that you give. And then, inshallah, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open doors of risk for you. So don't be stingy. Open and be, give, and be giving. And like I said, being wasteful. I see a lot of people, they, they spend, but they spend on the wrong things. Sometimes you see children walking with shoes almost as expensive as four tires. You know? <laughs> <laughs> really, some kids, they, they're walking around with three, four hundred dollar shoes. What is he doing with those three, hundred, three, four hundred dollar shoes? Really? Seriously. Some kids they have, I've seen, they wear shirts that cost three, four hundred dollars. I mean, there is something that when Allah gives you, you enjoy. But this is Islam, clear, clear, clear Islam. That you buy a t-shirt that's made of cotton for three, four hundred dollars because it has a little design on it. That is literally israf. That is what it means to be uh, wasting. What would be a better expense 
is taking your kids to experiences, spending on their education. For some reasons, parents, they're very stingy when it comes to the education of their kids. Very stingy when it comes to, you know, them learning something or enjoying something or an activity where they can, you know, interact. And then when it comes to these things, mashallah, their, their hearts are open. That's not how it should be. When, you, Allah, when Allah gives you, use it wisely. Don't just waste it. That's what he means. بَيْنَ تَبْفِيدٍ وَبُخْلٍ رُتْبَةٌ And that utbah is the utbah of where a Muslim should be. لَا تَخُبْ فِي سَبِّ سَادَاتٍ مَضُوا إِنَّهُمْ لَيْسُوا بِأَهْلٍ لِلزَّلَةٍ Don't be from those people that backbite and speak ill and curse the people and the pious, righteous people of the past. And this is especially, Shaykhna, a, a, a bala and a musibah that students of knowledge have. Where they speak ill of scholars of a different mashram. Where they speak ill of scholars, like for example, when Sheikh Yusuf al Qaradawi, when he passed away, you'll find people that didn't agree with him speaking ill of him. The man has passed away. This is not the time where you speak ill of a person. Rather, you should be from those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْلِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا وَفِلْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا You make dua for maghfira and rahma for the people of the past. But look, there's two extremes. There's the extreme where people, they curse and they, they speak ill. And then there's the other extreme, and I've experienced this, when one scholar holds an opinion. And you or a, a, an alim that is currently alive disagrees with it. And someone will come, how can you disagree with so and so? First of all, that is not how you should interact with scholars. When you come to a scholar, you should never say, so and so said this, so and so said this, so and so said this, but you're saying this. That's disrespectful. If you didn't want to ask, this is not the way to ask. Because clearly you already have an answer. You don't ask someone with the answer. If I have a question, and then you answer it for me, and then I said, oh, but he said this. How are you going to feel? This is disrespectful. Why are you asking a question you know the answer to? You're obviously doing it because of an ulterior motive. So when we deal with people of knowledge, we should be respectful and not say, he said this, he said this, and he said this. And if a scholar chooses to disagree with a scholar of the past, he has that right when it comes to those masail where ijtihad is open or where there is difference of opinion. I just had to point that out. لا تخوف في سب سادات النضو إنهم ليسوا بأهل النزل also means that we should hold back our tongues in general. You should not be speaking ill and cursing people in general. You should not be speaking ill of scholars or even Muslims in general, because all of the Muslims are awliya. All of the Muslims and all of the mu'mini are awliya to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the third line was وَتَغَافَ الْعَدْمُونِ إِنَّهُ لَمْ يَفُزْ بِالْحَمْدِ إِلَّا مَنْ غَفَلْ There's this concept, and Abu Fatih, Shaykh Abu Fatih loves speaking about this, تَغَافَلْ is different than غَفْلَ غَفْلَ is being completely, you're like, you're like a fool, you know? Huh? Ignore. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you ignore. You know, I'm sure the, the men with the experience of being in a marriage for so, so long, even the wives, you cannot be in a happy marriage unless you're having تَغَافَلْ You can't. Huh? What? You're getting recorded, they said. Oh, you're getting recorded. <laughs> Over, what is it, Sheikh? Yeah, it's not. Taghafal doesn't mean to ignore. It means to brush aside. Like you, you noticed it, but you're just you're not making it a big deal. Kasb al qulub aw lamin kasb al mawaqif, like Sheikh Muhammad always says. And there's a line in poetry, ليس الغبي بسيد في قومه لكن سيد قومه المتغابي. The سيد of the people is not the one who's a fool, and when you make fun of him in a different way, he doesn't even notice. No, he notices, but he doesn't pay attention to it, and he brushes it aside because he cares about his relationship with you. He cares about the greater goal, and he sacrifices, and he doesn't look to these small, small details. And a person, when he's at home with his family, he's a sayyid of his family. When you are a husband and you have a wife and you have children, or even uh, men in, in, in any, really, in any, you know, for example, a teacher with his students, or a, prod, uh, or a manager amongst his, the employees, you are, you are technically a leader amongst them. So you cannot take these small, small things and always make them into a big deal. Rather, you should be someone who has the love. You don't pay attention to it, you brush it aside. 
And if we look to the life of the Prophet ﷺ, you find many, 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 many instances where he just didn't pay it, he brushed it aside, and he didn't care to give it much attention and make it into a big deal. And perhaps I might give a khutbah on it, inshallah, uh, next week.